That was fast, Parma, Idaho, Western Labs. Very fast. I mailed the sample in Monday morning. Friday, I'm holding the results. Thank you very much. <music>
and check me out at the World of Colors on YouTube and you can learn how to make these wonderful gnomes. There you go. There you have it. Check out my sister's great YouTube channel. Check it out. Subscribe. And turn on your notifications. Share this with your wife and your craft makers, your hobbyist. Keep it a secret, but go tell a friend. The World of Colors is showing how her many secrets come together. Gnome again. I can't wait to get out the gnome again. Thank you, Roberta. I love it. Thank you very much. We're on the gnome again. Gnome again. I can't wait to get on the gnome again. Do, 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 do. And I can't wait to get on the gnome again. 28th. We're at E Rise. And E Rise says the fastest, most aggressive plant is the uh, the Baron, the Don Baron 1984 DMG, I believe it was. DMG, if you don't know, stands for damaged. It was a damaged pumpkin, but it was the mother of the new Michigan State record, 2,118 pounds, grown by Don Barron last year. So there you go. I am now number two and number three in Michigan. And you know what second place is? That's your first loser. Oh, second place is your first loser. Well, this guy's going down too. Yeah? Is he? Yeah, I, three of my plants are going to be all over the state record. Oh, my God. Look at them. <laughs> I can't ask you if you got your cannabis license because it's legal now. You don't need a license. You been smoking cannabis? Yeah, I'm getting hot from the smell over there. That's oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're growing some over there, ain't they? Yeah. Yeah, some wacky tobacco. All right, man. Well, that's good, E, right? You got it looking good. She's. They're starting to grow. I see you got pumpkin over there. There's a pumpkin on the. That's a 2145 right there. All right. You got all four of them set? Yeah. All right. You been romancing them? sleeping out here really <laughs> yeah. one eye open yeah all right you no know, once you got that electric fence and nothing can get in there before before i had the electric i get one up around 15 16 come out in the hole there for woodchucks yeah yeah that, that went and got me an electric fence and i ain't had a woodchuck or a rabbit or nothing in here since there you go folks electric fence right, right there. there i got two rolls see if they yeah. touch this go one ahead and touch it you touch this one, then you jump up and touch that one, that one will get you too. Yeah. Learn that in Vietnam. Yeah. Trip wires. Trip wires? Yeah. They missed that first one, they'll catch the second one. So then also you get your drinking buddies over here, you can dare them to pee on it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That'll knock you down. Oh, yeah. Light you right up, boy. <laughs> All right. So he, he has got the protection in place, June 28th. I just broke out the blower, steel blower, and we blew cow carb on them. It's going to be in the 87 this week, 84, 85, 87, next week at 91. It's, going to, it's been a hot June. Cold spring, hot June. Well, I'd say next week, it'd probably be Saturday, it'd probably be miserable weather for the 4th. Yeah. With all this hot weather now, and the 4th would be cold, rain, and everything else. No, they're saying 91, 91 on the 4th, so you, you better get you a 5th and a bag of ice. Celebrate the fourth or the fifth. Yeah. All right. I don't recommend that for anybody, but you know, hey, you're well, seventy. Do whatever you want to do. One in August. All right. All right. All right, everybody, keep them growing, man. Latest update. All right. I just arrived at Frank's. It's June twenty eighth. The pumpkins are what four days old, Frank? Yep, four days old. Hopefully, hopefully it'll make it. It's been pretty decent weather. We had a really cool day on the 24th. Yeah. And, you know, not only did I pollinate that day, e pollinated that day. I talked to e and he pollinated three that morning. And uh, he was out at like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning pollinating, which is really late for us. Typically, you're pollinating at 8 o'clock in the morning because it's hotter than the hinges of hell out there. But with a cool day like that, it's about sun and temperature. The sun has to come in, hit the flower, it warms up the flower, and produces a hormone that gets everything rolling. All right, don't ask me what the $12 word is, that hormone, but it's it's one of those $12 words, oxen or something like that. But anyways, so here we go. Here's the uh, pumpkin. Here's Frank's little baby. He's got a chair over it, so it's shaded. You don't want it to fry in the sun. You know, you wouldn't want that fresh baby skin to get fried. We, we keep a sheet and a blanket. If you're new to growing pumpkins, we keep the pumpkin covered all summer long with this sheet. It's also good to keep the woodchucks and deer from seeing the pumpkin also. Um, 
but it also prevents the skin from getting hard and dry. But what we're going to talk about today mostly is a couple of products. Oh, turning the vine. Yeah, how much farther do you think this has to go? It's not completely 90, but well, what I like, that leaf's yeah. real tight when I'm trying to move it. You know, I don't want to break it. It's twisting, but... See, I, I think you're turned enough. What I try to do is gradually I'll bring this leaf out of the way, and I like to keep the leaf under. Some people just cut all these leaves off, but according to Joel Oltz, our science guru in Minnesota, um, there's a plumbing link. And if you start cutting off all these leaves and roots, you are making it harder for the plant to send water down to the next leaf. So because of the shorter distance is better, I try to keep my leaves on as long as possible. You don't have to. Many big pumpkins have been grown without doing that. But what I do is I try to slowly bring the pumpkin over. I'll gradually, and do it. don't do it early in the morning when everything's cold, but as it warms up, I will gradually move this pumpkin this direction. I was just talking to Chris Kett about that on the phone, is taking that pumpkin and getting it to come over this way. And you can do that like a quarter inch a day, half inch a day. Don't try to do it all at once. You'll snap your little punky off. Um, you can use a stake, a stick. What I'd probably do is maybe put a little stake in the ground and put a piece of foam so you don't hurt the pumpkin. Maybe put sandwich a piece of foam in between it and gradually move that pumpkin to the left. You could, if you want, you could also pin the, maybe pin the vine down better and try to manipulate that vine, but you could get to the point where you might snap your vine. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful, but you do need to make clearance so that pumpkin's not growing on top of the vine. That's the biggest mistake that uh, new people make. Take these but, hey, we'll foam pool noodles and stick it under the vine so that it's free. Put one on each side, put one over here. All right, there you go. That's gonna raise it up off the ground. And now if he wants, he can put this root, blame it all on my roots, in a sock, a Bubba's Dirty Sock, and keep the Joel Alt's plumbing link going. All right, one way to go, or you can do what everybody else does, or a lot of guys do, they just hack all this crap out of the way because they don't want to deal with it but you're gonna shorten your plumbing link. We'll link this back to the plumbing link video. From the rear, there you are with your pool noodles. Pumpkin up off the ground. It's gonna raise, as it grows, it's gonna raise the vine off the ground. You might as well get her done now. Frank just cut off this leaf, and I tell Frank, yes, cut off that leaf, because what the plant will do, the plant will spend energy trying to heal this leaf. So rather than, um, you know, I don't know why it looks like this. I don't know what the deal is. It was did, it wasn't getting any sun. Yeah, it, it was underneath. This it was thing underneath. I talked, showed in my video cutting out leaves in the last yeah. video we made that you don't need. It wasn't getting any sun, so it couldn't be very productive. And now the plant will waste energy trying to heal it. No point in doing that. Cut out bad leaves. Mm -hmm. Cut them out at the base, right down just above the main vine. Cut them out. Mm -hmm. But hey, what we're doing today? I'm going to tell you real quick before we get a long-winded video going. Yeah, plant is looking great. Thanks. Awesome. And uh, usually there's trains blowing by my house, but today we get an airplane. Yeah, it's trains too over. Here. Trains, planes, yeah. and automobiles, baby. <laughs> but anyways, this is a this is a must. If you're growing giant pumpkins, this is called Merit, and it comes in uh, generic brands. You can find it 75 WP on the internet. It's wettable powder. Um, this is kills the squash vine borer. It's systemic. You can water it in, which is what I recommend, water it into the plant. It typically, the measurement is one teaspoon to 10 gallons of water. Water this in every seven to 10 days, all summer long, up until about the end of August. If you don't, the squash vine borer will destroy your plants if you live east of the Rocky Mountains. I heard they don't have these on the other side of the Rockies. If you're blessed with that, great. But what you must do is cut up all your male flowers as you will kill the bees. We do not want to kill the bees. Albert Einstein said that if we lose the bees, the planet will starve within four years. It's a famous statement made by Albert Einstein. So hey, cut your male flowers off, be responsible. This is a chemical. If you're an organic person, you're not gonna to want to use this. All right, I'm gonna link this back to one of my videos showing what the squash vine borer looks like. And here's another product I love to recommend, Agrifos, systemic fungicide. This stuff is great, man. 
and there's several different ways you can apply that. I highly recommend using this on your plant. And one last must of the year, Frank, you want a stump cover. Now the end of June, it's oh, time yeah. to put a stump cover on there. You need to start keeping your stump dry. The rookie mistake of the year is we dump all the water. We keep that stump. Keep a fan on it. The too, stump, or? we keep it wet. You don't have to keep a fan on it, but you don't want it to be wet. If yeah. it's constantly wet, you'll end up with a foaming stump. You'll end up with stem rot. Down, down south, they'll get gummy stem blight. All kinds of stuff can be caused by too wet. Too wet, too wet, too wet. Wasn't too hot, too? Or it can... Well, hot, the hotter you are, the higher the disease pressure. pressure. I was just talking to Chris Ken about that. I'm glad I don't live down south. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Yankee because <laughs> yeah. our winters kill a lot of diseases. And they don't get that hard freeze down south. It doesn't kill the diseases. So the diseases down south, I'm talking south of like Kentucky, it's just rampant. It's just rampant with disease, and it's harder for them to grow. So my hat's off to you guys down south. Um, you've grown some amazing stuff. Um, some of the, the uh, Terry's in Tennessee and Danny Vester in the Carolinas, Andrew Vile. You guys have done some amazing grows battling the disease pressure that you have down south. All right, so I'm going to cut this short. But, hey, remember, Agrifos stump covers and don't be watering your stump or your crown as joe also would call it if you keep your stump wet all summer long it will rot all right there's tip of the week anything you want to tell us frank <laughs> well the lights are out there because it's 11 o'clock and there's not much sun in the garden right now there are in about 7 to 11 there's sun and then it comes back about two three o'clock I just put the lights out last night only because I cut two secondaries early on and there's a tertiary coming out the back over there just trying to grow it out. Probably, probably won't leave them out too long because there's a lot of roots coming out of the ground even over here where there's nothing. There's a lot of white roots coming out of the ground that I'm probably damaging moving around back there but first year we'll see how it goes. Hopefully didn't hurt it too much but so Frank, Frank's a first year grower. He's doing amazingly well, but he's learning all of his mistakes one at a time. Like I'm just delivering him some merit right now. I'm bringing the merit down right now. It is like June 28th. He hasn't applied merit. He's uh, about a week late. We got to get this on here today or in a week he'll be crying the blues. So but just remember, you know, ask questions, emails, watch videos, come to Keep It A Secret Home and Garden, WorldwideGiantGrowers.com. And remember, there's no place like Gnome. There's no place like Gnome. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's videos. Please visit my sister's YouTube channel, The World of Colors, and subscribe and turn on your notifications and share her channel with your hobby friends, hobbies and crafts. She's the best. Stay tuned for the future videos. I'm gonna show you next how I uh, made a moisture meter in the 150 bed and what I'm doing exactly how I'm adding the copper and sulfur, how I will add them and water them in. And uh, stay tuned, watch for the next video. And you can see, and hey, don't forget to comment, we're gonna have prizes this summer. In fact, we'll draw one out of today's video. All right, keep them growing, man. And keep it a secret, but go tell a friend. Home and Garden Tips are here.